As the oil price falls below $40 a barrel, warnings of a real danger of a crisis of supply ahead. Good afternoon. It may seem odd to warn about oil shortages as the recession sees demand and prices tumble. But at an energy summit in London planned at the peak of prices, the Prime Minister Gordon Brown warned volatile prices would damage the global economy. Volatility is in no one's interest. Wild fluctuations in market prices harm nations all around the world. They damage producers and consumers alike. Also at noon, the race to rescue a round-the-world sailor who's alone on board his yacht with a badly broken leg, stranded off the coast of Australia. Here, the Bangladeshi trainee doctor who was forced into marriage by her parents talks for the first time of how she was made to take antipsychotic medication for three months. In the money, the credit crunch hits English local authorities' spending and revenue. The Audit Commission reveals how the demand for housing benefit and state school places is spiralling. Now you'd think cheaper oil prices would be good news, but the massive volatility that's gripped the market could cost the world economy trillions of dollars. That was the stark warning from Gordon Brown this morning at a global summit to discuss how prices can be stabilised. From a record $150 a barrel, prices have plummeted to less than $40 in the last few months. Mr Brown called for a visionary internationalism to deal with the challenge as James Blake reports. This is the most pressing challenge the international community faces, according to the Prime Minister, who warned that any failure to tackle volatile oil prices would cost the world economy trillions of dollars. It comes a day after oil prices hit record lows. Gordon Brown was playing host to the global power brokers of oil in London this morning, an emergency energy summit designed to calm nerves and protect future investment. Wild fluctuations in market prices harm nations all around the world. They damage producers and consumers alike. So let us begin with something I believe that everybody around the table can agree with, that even as we move to a low-carbon economy, the world will continue to need large oil for the foreseeable future. This in turn will mean that oil producers, particularly those with the lowest cost reserves, will need to continue to invest in capacity. And that's the key problem. If prices stay low, oil companies may not invest, sowing the seeds for a supply crunch in the future. This London meeting is a follow-up to one held in Saudi Arabia in June. At that time, crude oil reached the highest price ever at $147 a barrel. The price has fluctuated dramatically since then. Last night, crude closed at $36 a barrel, and this morning it opened fractionally up at 42 There is no shortage of supply, nor of demand. Instead, the world leaders appear to blame unfettered speculation on commodities markets. Saudi Arabia has often been blamed for keeping prices high in the past and are now expected to scale back production. No nation is fully immune. Sluggish markets and scaled-back investments are impacted, impacting world economies, with especially dire consequences for the spot, uh, prospects of developing nations. A harsh lesson from today's concurrent global economic slowdown is that no economy can decouple from the rest of the globe. The International Energy Agency has announced that global peak oil production could occur now as early as 2020. After that, supplies will just slow down. But ministers warn stable oil prices will be necessary for years to come to pay for the move to renewable energy and a low-carbon economy. Well, joining me now is David Strawn, author of The Last Oil Shock and a trustee for the Oil Depletion Analysis Centre. Gordon Brown seems to be um, taking very seriously the, the future situation with oil. Do you think he's, he's going the right way? Well, he's quite right that uh, volatile oil prices, you know, we've seen 147 right down to 36 in, in the space of a, a few months, is very damaging. In my view, the lower oil prices are almost as damaging as the high oil prices because they sow the seeds for the next oil price spike by limiting investment. So he's right about that. But I think his uh, solution, which is 
is, we've just heard, is essentially calling on OPEC to pump harder. He seems not to have really taken, uh, taken any notice of what's been going on for the last couple of years, which is it's, it's quite clear that OPEC is in real difficulty, or has been in real difficulty, in increasing its production, which tends to suggest they are reaching the, the, the geological limits. They may not be quite there yet, but I don't think they're in control in the way that he thinks that they're in control. So I think his, his analysis may be right, but his solutions uh, are not. Where is the situation just in terms then of, of when oil is going to run out? Because it wasn't long ago people were talking about oil running out by 2020 altogether. Well, if they were, they were mis misguided. I mean, it's, it's not a question of running out in terms of getting to the bottom of the last barrel on the planet. It's a question of when the oil supply peaks on an annual basis so that it reaches its highest le ever level and then starts to shrink on an annual basis as opposed to growing, which is what we're used to. And what we've seen in the last few years, and in fact since about 2005, is that global oil production has been essentially flat, which is very unusual given that the economy economy has been booming and demand for oil has been booming. And in those circumstances, there was only one way for the price to go. But as I say, I think that may be an early tremor of global peak oil because it really does tend to suggest that OPEC has been unable to increase its production because what has, na what has now happened has been deeply not in OPEC's interests. Uh, you know, the collapsing oil price is a disaster for them. Their state budgets don't balance. They're in the red. They're therefore in political difficulties at home. Um, so if they could have done anything to avoid this, they, they surely would have done. So in terms of where we are now with this summit, you've got conflicting interests. Do you realistically expect the kind of solution you think we need? Um, well, no, no. I mean, what, what would that solution be? I mean, I think it would be a very sensible thing for the world to agree a fixed oil price. Um, I mean, it wasn't so long ago in, in, in the last century that the, the Seven Sisters, the big multinational oil companies, simply decreed what the oil price would be. Could we come to an agreement which, was, uh, which uh, satisfied both the consuming and, and, and producing nations' interests? And where would that oil price be? I don't know, 80, 90, perhaps even nearer $100 a barrel. But that would ensure investment for the future, the investment that uh, Mr. Brown seems to want. But uh, what I fear is that Mr. Brown wants all this on the cheap, you know, that the consuming nations want stable oil prices at a low level, and of course the producing nations want uh, stable oil prices at a high level, that the, the critical factor is where would this agreement be, uh, and that's why it will never happen. Thank you very much, David Strong.